Hi there, Matt here again, and thanks for joining me for another video. I've got Joseph Price with me again. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Matt. Now, we're going to talk about today the idea of uh, if you're looking at buying, say, a Stratocaster online, some of the things to look about, particularly um, focusing on necks. Sure. So what have you brought in here for us to have a look at? Well, I bought a couple of neck blanks and a range of fingerboard woods. Um, but I guess I wanted to get in some terminology because obviously this is my profession, it's my job to know them. But I think that there's a couple of terms that maybe just, you know, the average player might not have heard or they have heard it, but they're not really sure what it means. Mm. So in the area of necks, have you ever heard of this term quarter sawn wood? I have heard of it and I've got no idea what it means. Okay, well, it's quite a fancy word, but I'll make it simple. Essentially what it is, is that if you're looking at the grain of the neck, and the grain is generally this nice straight lines. Mm. It's about determining how the wood was cut. So it's not a different type of wood, it's a different, um, or species, it's a different cut of wood. And specifically what it is, and no doubt there'll be some pictures on this vid, is looking at the end grain of the piece of wood, you can see that the winter growth lines are vertical. So they're, they're 90 degrees mm. to the plane of the surface. The reason that that's important in guitars is it gives you a piece of wood which is more dimensionally stable. So to put this into context, here in Australia, in Melbourne, we have 63% relative humidity. It's pretty wet, but it's, it can drop down to 40% or go as high as 90% in an afternoon. Mm. So if you were, let's say you were playing in Melbourne and your band flew to Darwin to play a gig, you're going to need to adjust that truss rod. So if you're looking to buy a Stratocaster online, it's definitely good to ask the dealer um, whether the guitar has a flat sawn or a quarter sawn neck. Flat sawn has the wood going perfectly horizontally. And there's a third type of wood, which is my least favorite as a builder, which is what's called rift sawn maple. It's usually at a 45 degree angle one way or the other. The reason this isn't good is it'll put a slight twist into your neck. This is not a deal breaker and many, many fenders are made this way. However, of the three options, quarter sawn, flat sawn, and rift sawn is the least dimensionally stable option. So I, I recommend avoiding that. Now there is another option that's come onto the market quite recently, which we have here. And this is a type of wood where it's still maple, but it's gone through a special process called torrification. Now it's sometimes referred to by a fender custom shop and John Sir guitars and others as roasted maple because it's put into a vacuum oven at incredibly high temperature. And the reason this is done is that it tries to force the sugars in the middle of the cell walls out of the wood. Or to put it in really basic playing terms, this wood is about four years old, but it thinks it's about 50 years old. And it makes it incredibly dry, incredibly stiff, but what's most important is it makes it dimensionally stable. So I actually won't use fig of maple in the neck unless it is roasted maple. Right. A fig of maple neck will never be as stiff or as stable as a straight grain maple neck. Lots of us enjoy the look of these fig of maple necks. Mm. And if you're gonna play at home and you don't mind a compromise in your setup, that's great. Mm. If you're playing live, playing a cover band or originals band and you like low action, you should avoid a fig of maple neck unless it is roasted maple, okay? Okay. Now getting into fingerboard woods, I thought, well, you know, the classic mm. one is to know if you're a maple fingerboard guy or a, a rosa fingerboard guy. I like both actually. Yeah. I like both for different reasons and I've got various different guitars. I love my telly, which was not on the wall yeah. here now, it's down off the wall. That's got a, um, a maple neck and a nitro finish, which I love. Yep. Um, but yeah, tell me, tell me about the sure. difference. Well, there's a myriad of options now and more so than at any time, you find that, you know, sites like warm off and um, you think uh, my friends at USA Custom Guitars, they'll offer more than the standards. And the standards for many years were maple fingerboards or this material, which is Indian rosewood. Um, I should point out that rosewood is a trade term. If a species is not part of the Dalbergia family, it's not a rosewood. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem, but when you're buying a guitar, you need to know what you're buying. And there's a lot of woods that have historically been kind of sexied up a little bit to make them sound more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, a really great fingerboard wood I love is this wood here. Now this is Pal Ferro. Uh, its most famous user was the Fender Custom Shop on the Stevie Ray Vaughan model. When Stevie had the lighting rig come down, um, I believe it was the same gig that actually made Curtis Mayfield a paraplegic. I could be wrong, but I guess we can check that, but it completely smashed his number one 
yeah. Stratocaster, and he had it refretted a bunch of times. So um, when they made the custom shop model, they went for Palferro fretboard. Now, you won't be able to see this on camera, but it has very, very close pores. So if you feel it, it's very, very smooth. Mm, you can get incredible. it polished like up, yeah, as yeah. smooth as ebony. It's also incredibly dimensionally stable. If I plane this, once it's there, it does not move. It's a very, very good fretboard for this purposes. But also what's great about it is it has a tone which is harder than rosewood. It's not as soft in the lows. So you find that a lot of guys who play really heavy metal and speed metal really like this fingerboard wood. Um, the two main proponents of it nowadays, I'd say, would be Roger Sadowski guitars, who's very famous in New York for his mm. guitars and specifically his jazz basses. He uses it exclusively on his guitars, mm. um, as well as John Sir. John Sir, you know, ex-Rudy Pencer shop, ex-Fender custom shop, a man who makes serious guitars. Mm. He uses this a lot, and he also makes one piece necks out of this. It's a really great wood, but it's somewhere, if you're looking for a soft tone, this is not the choice. Mm. Is that expensive to buy? Uh, you will be upcharged for it by a yeah. dealer. It doesn't cost me any more to buy it in lumber form than Indian rosewood, but that's because of its popularity. I used to be able to get it 20 years ago for buttons. Yeah. Um, so let, we should talk next about Indian rosewood. This is mm. the gold standard fingerboard wood for a reason. It's very light. It's dimensionally very stable. It's quite consistent from piece to piece. Sometimes you get it in this dark brown. When you sand it, it tends to go a very purple violet mm. quickly, which will oxidize later. It's a really, really great sounding wood. Um, it's also very light. If you feel this piece compared to this piece, you'll see it immediately. Yeah. It's almost twice as light. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And if you want that, well, I, it's funny. When I think of Jimi Hendrix, uh, obviously we think of the clean wing, cries Mary tone, all the way up to Pearl Hayes, whatever. But if you're wanting what I think of as that front pickup clean sound, which is just so full and smooth, in your rosewood is a great choice for that. Right. It's, and it's what you'll find on the vast majority of Fender products. Mm. Now, there's another option, which is getting into the megabuts category, mm. okay, which is Brazilian rosewood. Mm. Now, Brazilian rosewood, for a very good reason, has a legendary status amongst builders, players, and collectors. Um, and I'll demonstrate for you why. It has a particular tap tone that very few other woods do. Just gonna adjust it to find the node. Get really close to the mic. It basically is completely resonant at all frequencies. Um, all of the pre-CBS L-series Fender Stratocasters were made for Brazilian rose with fretboard. Most of the classic um, Gibson acoustic guitars, like a J45, also have a Brazilian rose with fretboard. It is a very stiff wood, dimensionally. It's not as stable as Indian rosewood. We're talking minor differences. But it has a prized reputation for good reason. It, it'll add a liveliness to your sound across all the frequency ranges. If you're looking to get as close as possible to genuine vintage guitar sounds, you're probably going to need to go with that. And white whites? Uh, it's about in between those two, actually. Oh, it's a beautiful piece of timber. Now, I don't have here, I didn't bring an ebony fingerboard, but I felt that it would be important I speak about this. For many years, certainly in the realm of archtop guitars, a maple neck paired with an ebony fingerboard is the gold standard. Um, the reason for this is because the archtop guitar evolved out of the violin family. It's essentially a violin with you know, guitar scale. Mm. The problem with that combination is that ebony is a very um, hydroscopic wood. It takes on and loses moisture throughout its life. It never truly achieves dimensional stability. Maple is also not the most dimensionally stable material. And if you laminate the two together to make a neck, uh, you're always gonna have a problem with your action. But maple and ebony as a combination is really not a great idea. Mm. It's also quite a harsh sound. Um, it was being popular sort of back in the 80s with some of the higher end Jackson models. Mm. Um, and with enough preamp gain, you'll get away with it. But I wouldn't recommend if anyone who's seeking, if let's say you're buying a custom shop fender, for example, or commissioning a luthier. That'd be nice, I wouldn't mind buying one. Sure. Um, obviously, an ebony fingerboard with inlay looks fantastic, but there is gonna be some compromise to your sound and that you can never get an ebony fingerboard to sound like a maple fingerboard. It's just a different beast altogether. So it's something to consider when you're out shopping is to not completely let your eyes dictate the purchase. You know? mm. It's hard to sometimes, but that's really good information and thank you very much for sharing you're welcome. it. welcome. Well, thanks for viewing again. And if you like the video, please subscribe and hopefully we'll see you again soon.